This noon, the cleanup still underway after a big rig skids off the interstate straight into a barbecue restaurant on the east side. And it is the first day of school for East Central ISD. We are taking to Legacy Middle School as students and teachers get their school day routine started. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. And of course, we have to start with the biggest story of the summer. <laughs> Maybe. Rainy weather getting to blame for an overnight crash. Some of us got a lot of rain, some of us got too much. Some people had to wait longer for their special deliveries as a result of this, though. San Antonio police say a big rig carrying Amazon packages skidded off I-35 near AT&T Parkway. It broke through a guardrail, crossed the access road, and then slammed into a restaurant. And as Katrina Weber tells us, in spite of all that damage, no one was hurt. It's the wrong place and wrong time for a drive through meal. Still, the man behind the wheel of this big rig had no choice but to slam into Grady's Barbecue, which was closed at the time. He was heading south on a rain slick I-35 around 4 this morning. San Antonio police say he hydroplaned near AT&T Center Parkway, took out the highway guardrail and sideswiped the tree. The impact opened up his trailer like a sardine can and turned smiles on his cargo upside down. The driver told me the packages with the familiar Amazon logo were headed for a shipping facility in town. Somehow he wasn't hurt. This is one situation where perspective really makes a big difference. Based on what you see on the other side, you'd never expect things to look this way. And the damage to the restaurant, not nearly as bad as you might expect. According to police, the truck clipped only a corner of an outside dining area. It left the highway guardrail in need of major repairs, though. There was no fixing the truck or trailer, but a crew did its best to get the cargo back on the road. Workers spent time offloading all the packages so the big rig could be towed away. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Minus that crash and slowdowns this morning's rain was a very welcome sight. A lot of us heard rain falling early this morning and we're a little bit surprised about it because it actually lasted longer than a, a minute or two. <laughs> Weather Authority Justin Horn letting us know when we can expect any more today. I'm hopeful. Well, here in San Antonio, it's going to be a little hard to come by. This system's starting to move west, but we're still getting some really good heavy rain to the south and west of town. You see these areas of yellow and red there that represents some of that heavier, heavier rain, tropical type rain. You can still see the sort of the pinwheel nature of this low as it came through South Texas and boy, it brought some much needed rain. We always say it's kind of tropical weather that tends to get us out of these droughts and we're, we're not out of the drought by any stretch of the imagination, but this does help. So let's look at the radar right now, the live radar. And the heaviest of the rain is down there south of Catula. We're seeing some lightning strikes, but it's these bands right here, these kind of bands that really produce the good, good downpours, sometimes blinding downpours. If you're uh, plans on traveling, if you have plans on traveling down I-35, be aware of that because around Pearsall, this rain is very heavy right now. You can pick up a quick inch of rain just with this band that is tracking south to north there along I-35. Crystal City, Carrizo Springs, you're seeing some light rain right now. Divine lightens up right about there and as you get into san antonio there's n just not much here it's not to say we couldn't see a few more showers this afternoon but things are winding down for us here in town and as we head into tomorrow more sun more heat we're going to talk about that forecast the good news here more chances of rain though too further down the road we'll take a look in just a few minutes guys thank you justin the rain may be gone here in town but some weather issues are still going on Right now, we have nine active power outages. CPS Energy is working to restore power to more than 4,000 customers, the largest number of customers affected near the Bandera Road and Loop 1604 area. The questions surrounding Pete Ardondo's position as Uvalde CISD police chief still up in the air. After two previous attempts by the school board to discuss the issue, they are expected to take up that matter once again today. School board members will consult an attorney about his termination hearing. That's according to a board's agenda for today's regular school board meeting. The attorney consultation will happen in a closed session. Ardondo was placed on leave by the district nearly one month after the Uvalde school massacre. San Antonio police still investigating this noon, a shooting that sent two women to the hospital. Officers say those women just showed up at Northeast Baptist Hospital this morning uh, just before two o'clock. They arrived in a vehicle that was riddled with bullets. Both of them had gunshot wounds. Officers tell us the two are not cooperating with their investigation. 
Both women, though, are expected to be okay. Today, yes, it is the first day of school for Alamo Heights ISD and East Central ISD. This morning, our Sarah Coaster was at East Central's Legacy Middle School, where teachers welcomed the students. Some little nervous coming into school. Kind of nervous and exciting because sixth grader Alexis Salinas having those first day jitters, but she says with her eighth grade sister by her side, it keeps her calm navigating the new schedule changes that come with middle school. The biggest change is that last year we had only one teacher and this year we have like a lot of teachers. So like that's what I'm like excited about. Legacy Middle School Social Studies teacher Lizzie McLean giving the best advice for students who may be nervous on their first day. Remember to breathe, she says this week is all about getting to know the students and making them feel comfortable. What do I need to do in order to be successful? Um, so we make sure we build those lessons in with our social emotional learning curriculum and then also making sure that we take the time as teachers if a student is kind of in crisis making sure that we can help them comfort them support them and get them what they need. Principal of Legacy Middle School Lori Barber says the district's priority this year is safety of the students and the district is in constant communication with parents and has made sure all campuses are secure. And the district also uh, did an audit this summer of all of the, the schools. They checked all of the exterior doors, made sure that they were all functional and working. And so we put a lot of new measures in place. Mom to sixth grader Alexis and eighth grader Addison says safety is always a concern for parents, but overall she feels good about her girls going back to school. There's always that small worry, but just hearing the announcements being made and how safety is a priority, I'm, I'm feel, feeling pretty confident and pretty at ease. And the district wants to remind all students that they eat for free this year. Breakfast and lunch will be served at all campuses. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. When Tafoya Middle School students return to school tomorrow, they're going to see a newly refreshed campus. From renovated spaces to interactive learning boards, improvements all seen all over the school. Tiffany Huertas has more on how these changes will impact the way students learn this year. It used to be two classrooms and it used to be really dark. Now, light fills sixth grade science teacher Maria Lanford's classroom. We have all of the big tables which are conducted for science labs. Lanford's class is filled with new furniture and equipment. They used to be like green chalkboards and uh, whiteboards that didn't work, so <laughs> I'm excited that I have a awesome smart board. When Tafoya Middle School students return to campus tomorrow, they will find changes all over. When you look around the cafeteria here, everything you see is basically new. This is part of the 2016 bond. Renovations of this campus started in 2019. The total cost? over $25 million. Everything on the interior from the mechanical, electrical, uh, the plumbing, the finishes, all the interior walls had, had to go, it had to be uh, upgraded. The campus will continue making improvements. Including two uh, new gymnasiums, uh, renovations to the auditorium, as well as new fine art spaces in, in the annex. This campus was built in 1969. Thanks to the 2020 bond project, this is one of the classrooms that will be renovated. Construction for phase two begins in December. For now, teachers like like Miss Lanford cannot wait to see their students' faces when they step into her room. We have a ton of desks that we can move around so I can teach in small group, I can teach in a whole group or individually for testing. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. The refs called that Cowboys preseason game Saturday night. Probably got a good night's sleep because they're worn out from throwing all those penalty flats. More on that coming up in sports. <laughs> Straight ahead, a local company is partnering with NASA again. This time it's to build infrastructures on the moon. Max Massey has more on the company's next mission to the final frontier. History was made back on July 20th, 1969, when Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin walked on the moon. Since then, NASA has grown, technology has evolved exponentially, and space travel has become commercialized. And now, as Max Massey shows us, Astroport, a local company, has a second contract from NASA, and they have the goal of building on the moon. Astroport is a space construction and materials construction company, or materials development company. We are building infrastructure for the moon. Meet Sam Jimenez, space architect and CEO of Astroport. It's a company working to use moon dust to build infrastructure on the moon thanks to a second NASA contract. Well, the first one was to learn how to melt the regolith. This is what we build with. We take the, the moon dust essentially and we melt it. 
learn about the, the heat regimes and the, the, how you how you get to the to the melting and the solidification of that material. And now this one is how do we actually construct the landing pad? This is the excavation. This is an unconsolidated rock material. This moon material is being used to build, so you wouldn't have to bring more materials to outer space. So how do we excavate that, that lunar dirt and turn it into the material that feeds the melter? And this is what we'll be doing in that. So it's, it's, it's called bulk regolith uh, manipulation, the bulk regolith excavation and sieving and filtering and putting it into our, into our as a feed system into the melter. That's the big difference. The civil engineering aspect of it. The new research describes a multi-step way for multiple machines to autonomously or via remote control to collect materials on the moon, melt it down, then use them as building materials. The idea seems almost like science fiction, but it is in the works and it could come sooner than you think. Well, we actually have a, a technology milestone by 2026 to put our first technology demonstration robot on the lunar surface to prove as a proof of concept that we can actually make these bricks on the moon. 2026 is the big milestone. And Sam tells me by 2030, the building of infrastructure could begin. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. After this summer, I don't think I would want to go to some place so dry and dusty. <laughs> well, at least we got a little bit over the last uh, yeah. few hours. That it's was been nice. wonderful. Yeah, that dust has turned to mud yeah. and we're okay with that. Uh, some good rain around the area, and the aquifer is still going up. It's up six tenths of a foot to 633.4. Hopefully that trend continues. And as we look at the pollen count, not a surprise here. Molds are high at 2,700. Compiling some of the rainfall totals, we'll look at those. We'll get you another radar update and talk about this forecast. Is there more rain ahead? It's coming up. We've actually had a little bit of rain the last two or three days. Today was the good rain, which mm -hmm. was a real good dust buster oh, rain. Well, yesterday, I had to. I was riding a horse. I had to run back to the barn because oh, no. we had a big downpour. Well, and it just feels tropical, right? You yeah. can kind of feel that tropical moisture. And we look at the radar and satellite here, and it just looks like a tropical system. It, it, it was. It never became a depression or a storm or anything like that. But this is that nice kind of just a tropical low, exactly what we need. Uh, brought some good heavy rain. We haven't had a whole lot of flooding, so that's good news. Severe weather, gusty winds, we haven't had any of that, so this is really a good thing. And uh, we'll take a little closer look here with the radar. Still seeing some heavier rain down to the south and west of San Antonio. You see the, the reds there around Pearsall. That's where you're getting some really good downpours, good tropical downpours, and a few lightning strikes, I might add, associated with that as well. So let's zoom in a little bit closer. And what I want to do here is take a look at some of the rainfall rates, and it is telling because this, uh, the, these are very effective at putting down some good heavy rain because it's just, there's so much moisture in the atmosphere. So we'll put on the rain rate here, and this tells us how much rain it'll put down within an hour. And we'll zoom in on some of these uh, purple colors here. So we're talking about three inches per hour. If this were to sit over Pearsall for an hour, they get three, you know, a little over three inches of rain. And that's the case there too. This one about six inches per hour. So that's how heavy these storms are, and they're not going to sit there for a full hour, but they're kind of training a little bit up and down I-35. So we could get some pretty healthy totals here, I think, over the next couple of hours. And that's something we'll be watching. Could there be some flash flood warnings? It's possible, especially as you go south to Pearsall, the Dilly area down in here where we've already picked up quite a bit of rain. You go south of that, there are flash flood warnings down towards Freer and as you get down towards Laredo. So if you're traveling on I-35 today, be aware of that. There is going to be some very heavy rain in those areas. And then as we go north, it begins to taper off. So the vine, kind of the, the edge there as you get towards San Antonio, not much, at least at the moment. That's not to say we couldn't see a few more isolated showers today, but I think the bulk of it is going to be to our west and to our south. And I'll put this into motion again. And you'll see that some of this is starting to rotate north. So I think the vine, Hondo, Castroville, you could be in for some of these heavier showers here over the next couple of hours. And again, we'll keep a close eye on the radar. But as we look at the numbers, boy, they've, they've been really good. Hebronville down there to the south, 6.76 inches, and we're trying to keep these updated because we're still seeing these numbers go up. But northeastern Webb County, 5.81. Cotula is now up to 3.63 inches. 
And this is that winter garden region that was so dry over the summer. So just a good, good soaking rain here in San Antonio, about 2200 seven inch. That's it. Not a great number, but at least we did get some of that rain rotating through. You go north of San Antonio and it's been almost completely dry. Uh, Crystal City, about seven tenths of an inch. And you see where the exceptional drought is. So a lot of this rain did fall over those drought stricken areas. And as we zoom in a little bit closer here around San Antonio, Forestville, almost half an inch, Castroville, two tenths of an inch. And you could add to that today. Same around Uvalde, about half an inch there. As we go outside for you, mostly cloudy skies. This is going to help us with temperatures. We'll probably only make it to about 90 or so. There's going to be a big temperature difference between the southwest areas that get rain and have cloud cover and then you go northeast of San Antonio. There'll be a lot of sun and it will jump into the 90s. 81 Stinson, 79 Kelly, 83 right now in Randolph. And you see the temperature difference already. It's 90 in Austin, 93 in Gonzales, but 70s underneath that rain shield and then 70s and 80s here around San Antonio and very humid as well. The forecast calls for again, maybe a few showers to rotate through San Antonio this afternoon, not expecting much. And then by tonight, the rain goes away. Tomorrow, the sun pops out and temperatures will be back in the 90s for sure. So the case at 12 hour forecast, 86 degrees by three o'clock. We'll keep in a 20 to 30 percent chance of rain here in town, mostly cloudy as we head into this evening and uh, mostly cloudy this evening as well uh, or tonight, I should say. And very quickly, we look at down the road what we have going on here. There's the low. There's our ridge of high pressure. It actually moves off to the north and west. This opens the door a little bit. Could we get a weak frontal boundary by the end of the week? possible. It's not going to be terribly strong, but it could be enough to stir up a few showers and storms. So things are looking up 96 degrees by Tuesday, 98 Wednesday. It does get hot midweek 99 Thursday, 30% chance of some storms late with that weak front and then cooling down just a little bit Friday, 30% chance of rain, maybe a few more isolated storms by the weekend. No triple digits in that forecast. Doesn't look bad at all. Well done, Justin. I know you're taking all the credit. Well, all okay. right. This time. This time. This <laughs> time. Thank you. Hey, the Cowboys have the same old problem. And at least the Texans pulled off a win this weekend. We've got highlights from both coming up. Camping with KSAT. Powered by Davis Law Firm. Yeah, it's kind of hard to imagine. After two weeks of practice, the Cowboys can still commit more penalties than points scored. But they managed to pull that off Saturday night. And you got to wonder about Mike McCarthy's job, maybe? Talk about undisciplined. It was their preseason opener against the Broncos in Denver. 17 penalties, most in the league in week one of the preseason. Remember, last year, they led the league in penalties. The average, by the way, over the weekend, six and a half penalties per team per game. So that will tell you just how bad it was against the Broncos. Tyler Smith had a holding problem in college, continues in the pros. A rookie who is expected to start at left guard whistled twice for holding. The most frustrating penalty came on that field goal attempt by the Broncos that was missed, only to give Denver's Brandon McManus a second chance at it after Kelvin Joseph jumped off sides on special teams. McCarthy downplayed the penalties after the 17-7 loss, though. This is really the starting point that you go through every year. So this, this is preseason. I don't think this has anything to do with last year. I mean, obviously, you guys get to write what you want, but uh, you know, it's it's a starting point. Yeah, uh, yeah. I don't I don't like I don't like the number of penalties. You know, made it clear. I talked about it at halftime. It was still just learning. You know, like you know, it was the first preseason game. You know, there was a lot going on. There was a lot. Uh, you know, that we honed in on. Physicality was definitely a big focus for me from the onset. You know, I talked to Tyron. I talked to Zach about it. You know, they said you know it was just little idiosyncrasies you got to understand when it comes to like the NFL and like you know just you know run game and uh, stuff like that. So I'm definitely still learning. You know, we getting better every day. You know. I'll, I'll definitely improve. Well, I guess if your starting point is 17 penalties, then you can definitely improve. Everything looks up, I guess. Week two, Cowboys and Chargers are going to have a little scrimmage this week, and then they'll take on the Chargers Saturday night at Sophie Stadium. Meantime, the Houston Texans started the preseason with a win when they hosted the New Orleans Saints in their preseason opener for the rebuilding team. The only way to go is up after back-to-back four-win seasons and a new head coach in Lovey Smith, Davis Mills got to start a quarterback. No scoring drives, three for three, 14 yards. Kyle Allen and COVID protocol backup Jeff Driscoll took it the rest of the way. He had two touchdown passes on the night. The first to Jalen Camp in the first half, the second. Then game winner was to Johnny Johnson. How about that? Houston wins at 17-13. It was also exciting to see rookie running back Damian Pierce in action as he was able to shed a tackle to pick up 20 yards on his first carry, giving Texans fans some hope that they could have a running back and maybe 1,000-yard rusher for the first time since 2019. 
Jeff's our third team quarterback. Whenever your third team quarterback can come in and keep running offense, I know early on we weren't moving an awful lot, but he just kept plugging away. I like some of the things that he was able to do. Damon Pierce uh, definitely caught my and everybody's eye uh, that was watching him. And that's what we've seen in uh, training camp also. He's a good football player. Playing quarterback in this league, there's there's only one starter. I've been around long enough to where I've had to come off the bench. Um, and, that, and that's just part of being a quarterback, is being prepared and ready to go no matter the situation. Um, and coming in and playing and playing well. All right, so both Texas teams are on the West Coast. So the Cowboys play on Saturday. The Houston Texans will play the L.A. Rams Friday night in Sophie Stadium. Kick off for that one is at 9 o'clock. All right, coming up next, Johnson & Johnson making a huge announcement about their baby powder product, what you need to know. And authorities now investigating a bus shooting in Jerusalem. The suspect is in custody. We want to bring you the latest on that bus shooting in Jerusalem. Eight people were hurt. At least five of them were Americans. Israeli police say a Palestinian suspect turned himself in. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. A Palestinian man is in custody after officials say he surrendered to authorities. And investigators are now working to pin down a motive behind this bus shooting near Jerusalem's Western Wall. The bus driver speaking out about the terrifying moments. Two people outside I see falling, two inside. It was uh, bleeding. And the uh, people, everybody, entry panica. Officials say eight people were hurt, including five Americans. A father and son from Brooklyn now recovering after the attack. He bent down over his family to protect them. He was shot in the neck. His condition is improving. His son was shot in the arm. Authorities have identified the alleged gunman as Amir Sadawi. They say he was armed with a handgun and also fired at a car and pedestrians. At 1.24 a.m., we got a call on a mass shooting terrorist attack going on at the Western Wall in Jerusalem. When I got to the scene, I saw a few people lying on the floor in critical condition. Three of them were in critical condition. A pregnant woman shot in the stomach. Doctors performing an emergency delivery. Her baby now in serious but stable condition. Investigators say so far they believe the suspect acted alone and that he's not affiliated with any of the groups in Gaza that are praising the attack. Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid condemned the shooting. The attack comes just a week after a ceasefire ended some of the worst fighting in the region in a year. Israeli airstrikes killing 48 Palestinians, including 17 children, and the Islamic Jihad militant group firing more than 1,000 rockets at Israel. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. A fight between coaches at a youth football game in North Texas ends in a deadly shooting. This happened over the weekend in Lancaster, just south of Dallas. Police say a youth football coach was fatally shot during an argument. Authorities have identified the suspect as Yaqib Salik Talib, who police say is the brother of NFL Super Bowl champion Aqib Talib. Authorities have not released the name of the victim. Capitol Police investigating a bizarre incident. A man crashes into a U.S. Capitol barricade, jumps out of his vehicle and starts shooting a gun into the air, then shoots himself. It happened Sunday morning. No one else was hurt. The car hit a barrier and burst into flames. The U.S. Capitol Police chief says the suspect was a 29-year-old resident of Delaware with a criminal history. Authorities are now looking through security footage to determine a possible motive. The police chief said it does not appear the man was targeting any members of Congress. Increased precautions and security have been put into place following recent threats to other law enforcement agencies. Police in Pennsylvania say they have the man responsible for killing a woman, allegedly crashing his car into a crowd of people on Saturday. The 24-year-old suspect accused of deliberately driving into the crowd at a fundraising event. 17 other people were injured. Police say before driving into the crowd, he allegedly killed his mother with a hammer in a nearby town. He was arraigned on two counts of criminal homicide. Police are trying to figure out a motive. Bail, meantime, has been denied. Almost two weeks after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan, a five-member U.S. delegation is in Taiwan today visiting with government and private sector representatives. A Taiwanese Democratic Progressive Party lawmaker says the visits by U.S. senators holds great significance during the current tension between <coughs> China and Taiwan. Prior to and during Pelosi's trip, China had voiced its disapproval and 
bluntly told the U.S. to stay out of Taiwan. Taiwan officials say China cannot stop politicians from any country from visiting, reducing tensions in the Taiwan Strait, and instruments in Taiwan's crucial semiconductor industry are expected to be key topics of discussion. Looking outside with live cam, lots of clouds. Everybody around this shot, at least, got some rain. Yeah, those roads are starting to dry out a little bit here in San Antonio, but we got some rain this morning. There were some puddles out there. We're still tracking some heavier rain down to the south and west of San Antonio, and I put a tracker on this little area right here that is kind of moving north, a little bit northeast, so it's kind of working its way up I-35, but it'll be near Yancey at about 1240 Bigfoot, 1240 <laughs> uh, Natalia, about 1259 and uh, it should move a little bit uh, further north into parts of Medina County and, and Bear County, I think uh, a little bit later this afternoon, probably weakening some. I don't know that we're going to get a whole lot here in San Antonio, as I was saying earlier, but at least just west of town, I do think there will be some uh, decent rainfall. We'll put it back into motion here and uh, we'll close this up. And again, you can kind of see that area of heavier rain starting to rotate in just around the Divine area. So this is just starting to cross from Frio in the Medina County. And there's some lightning strikes here too. And there's going to be some blinding rain if you're driving through that. Uh, otherwise, it's light rain west of that. And here in San Antonio, as I said, things are generally drying out. Not a, a ton of rain here at the moment. 83 degrees at the airport. We've got 70s out west and then you got 90s as you go east where there is more sun. We should be up around 90 here in town today. We'll talk about the extended forecast and how long this rain is going to hang around coming up in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. Activity and exercise are good for the brain, but you don't need to be an Olympic athlete to reap the benefits. ABC's Justin Finch looks at a new study that could help your life. We know that staying active is good for the brain. Experts typically recommend about 150 minutes of moderately intense exercise a week. However, little was known about how much was enough to stave off dementia. A recent study from a team of researchers in Korea looked at varying levels of activity and dementia risk in people over age 65. They found that compared to inactive people, even light activity can reduce your risk of dementia by up to 10%. This suggests doing things like housework or taking leisurely walks can be beneficial. And the more active you are, the better your brain health. Participants who engaged in frequent high-intensity exercise reduced their risk of dementia by up to 28%. So strive for 150 minutes, but if you can't, any exercise is better than none. With this Medical Minute, I'm Justin Finch, ABC News. Still coming up this half hour, a great grandmother overjoyed as her family tree continues to grow and expand. We'll show you this great matriarch as she meets her 100th great grandchild. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex are heading back to the UK. When and why the couple is traveling across the pond again is straight ahead. Coming up next, Johnson & Johnson makes it official. They are removing its talc baby powder from shelves from around the world. Now the company says it's updating its powder product. These are your top headlines from Cheddar News. The House passing the Inflation Reduction Act, delivering a major win for Democrats and President Biden that ahead of the midterms, with all Democrats supporting and all Republicans opposing. The chamber approved the more than $430 billion package by a 220 to 207 margin. This now heads to President Biden's desk for his signature. Meanwhile, at least one lawyer for former President Trump signed a written statement in June saying that all classified material of Mar-a-Lago had been returned to the government. That's all according to the New York Times. Still, the FBI search of Trump's Florida home turned up more documents just last week. Now, YouTube is planning to launch an online store. That, according to the Wall Street Journal, the move will allow YouTube to be more competitive with Amazon, Roku, and Apple, all of which have their own hubs to sell streaming video services. The new marketplace will allow consumers to choose streaming services a la carte all through the main YouTube app. Hey, I'm your Cheddar News Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan.
In other consumer news, Johnson & Johnson announcing that it is planning to stop selling talcum-based baby powder around the world next year. The company says it'll update its formula so the powder is made with cornstarch instead. Johnson & Johnson has maintained its product is safe despite it being at the center of lawsuits for years. Thousands of women sued the company, claiming they had developed ovarian cancer after using the regular talcum powder. Johnson & Johnson's talc-based baby powder hasn't been sold in the U.S. or Canada since 2020. Facebook's parents, parent company, Meta, is looking at expanding encryption features on some of its apps as it faces backlash over law enforcement's access to users' conversations. So Meta officials say it's going to test making chats and messages end-to-end -end encrypted by default for some users on Messenger and Instagram. The company also plans to make calls on platforms fully encrypted, as well as create a new secure storage service for encrypted conversations. Meta says this will allow users to back up conversations in case they lose their devices, but the company won't be able to access those backed up messages. Disney known to be the happiest place on earth. That's what the ads say, and apparently it's a pretty happy place in the world of streaming, too. Disney Plus added 14.4 million subscribers during the third fiscal quarter. Between all of Disney's streaming services, that's Disney Plus along with Hulu and ESPN Plus. The grand total? 221 million total subscribers. That beats Netflix and Wall Street analysts' expectations. A great grandmother from Pennsylvania showing us all just how much love it takes to create her own family dynasty. Since just after World War II, her family has grown from 11 children to 56 great, rather 56 grandchildren, and now. She has great-grandchildren in the triple digits. ABC's Will Gans has the story. How do you think, At 99 years young, Peggy Kohler is celebrating her 100th great-grandchild. First thing out of the hospital, I mean, we went to grandmoms, introduced her to Kohler. She was absolutely ecstatic. Special not only because he's number 100, but because his name is special, too. I've always loved the name Cole. And Chrissy one day is like, hey, how about Kohler? I thought about it like Kohler, and, and then we went Kohler William, which William Kohler was uh, her grandfather's name. When she was a teenager, Peggy had plans to become a nun. I actually applied in, when I was a junior in high school, uh, but he talked me out of it. Peggy and William married, and the two would welcome 11 children. I wanted to have a big family. Um, I think it's difficult being an only child. <clears throat> it's lonely. A family full of lawyers and educators, real estate developers, and one son taking over the family funeral home business. I always hoped for a doctor, but didn't get one. No doctors, but 11 children, 56 grandchildren, and now 100 great-grandchildren. You know, having 11 kids is stressful, and then you add grandkids and great-grandkids on top of that. What Has she ever shared with you what her secret is? I has work out twice a day which is insane. I think faith is the other one I'd say. Faith and family um, really gets her going. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> she looks great. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. She's trying to do the math. That's, that's impressive. They would have to rent like a whole park just for a family reunion. Ooh, easily. That's just the immediate family. <laughs> Uh, 83 degrees so far today. 74 was the low this morning. We picked up about eight, 18 hundredths of an inch of rain here in San Antonio just today, but overall about a quarter of an inch uh, from yesterday, and we picked up a little bit more before that. So some rain around San Antonio, heavier rain still to the south of town. We have another radar update for you coming up. Talk about that storm that's southwest of San Antonio and I got some breaking weather. Yeah, we got to keep an eye on something now. Uh, Justin Horn standing by with news of a tornado warning. Is it Justin? Yeah, we just got a tornado warning issued and this is going to go until 115 and this is uh, moving north at about 35 miles per hour. So what we get with these uh, with these tropical systems sometimes is we get little spin ups. These are typically very weak spin ups but they can produce these quick, very brief tornadoes. And this was located near Moore, about eight miles west of Divine, moving north at 35 miles per hour. Again, this goes until 115. And some of the locations impacted by this would be Hondo, Moore, and Beery. So let's take a little closer look here. We've got the wind detector on, so what we're looking at is that spin. 
And sometimes when you get a little couplet right there, you see the green and red close together is where you can get a little bit of a spin up. Now this looks like fairly broad rotation, but it's possible there could be a little spin up in there just north of Moore, and then this would work its way towards Hondo. So we can put uh, the tracker on this, and uh, yeah, it's about 20 miles away there from Hondo, so it would arrive about 1.30 or so. Uh, maybe a little sooner than that, and this is uh, something we're going to watch. So when we put it back to the radar, and uh, we're using the uh, New Braunfels radar here to kind of watch it, but it's right in this area uh, that we would get some of that rotation, and not to mention we've got some very heavy rain now moving through the Moore area. This is blinding rain, uh, probably uh, five to six inches per hour rain rates that we're talking about. But this is quickly working its way up towards Highway 90, and it's right within this box, this tornado warning, where we are getting a little bit of rotation. And I'm going to stop it once again, and we're going to put it back on the uh, wind detector here and uh, look at the uh, potential uh, maybe wind change with this as it uh, works off to the north and uh, we're going to put the storm relative velocity on here and there it is it's right there again it's pretty broad but this is uh, working its way to the north and that's what we are you know, watching right there again very weak these typically are very weak but if you're watching from the city of Hondo let's keep a close eye on this you may want to go ahead and take some precautions here just in case this thing is uh, reaching the ground or does work in your direction. They typically, if they do hit the ground, won't stay there very long. So we'll switch back to radar one last time here because we got to get through uh, this weather cast here. But I want to point out that, yes, we do have that tornado warning. And that's going to go for a little bit longer, not to mention we've got some very, very heavy rain here working its way up I-35. So Divine, you're about to get in on some of this heavy rain. And this could uh, clip the Castroville area, Castroville area and then work into Medina County. And you see all the rain down towards Dilly and Catula. This is where we could also see a little bit of flooding. I'll point that out. This is well west of San Antonio at this point. Uh, we'll uh, keep you posted. Excessive rainfall, still a risk, especially south and west of town. This yellow color is where we have pretty good chances, some pretty heavy rain today. Time lapse shows uh, we've got some of those clouds moving through temperatures right now sitting at 83 degrees east southeasterly winds at about 17 miles per hour. And I think what we'll do here is we'll go ahead and uh, go to break, but uh, we're going to talk more about this tornado warning. We're going to keep you posted on that uh, as uh, we get some more information here, guys. Welcome back. We want to get you back to that tornado warning that we were just talking about here in northwestern Frio moving into Medina County. Uh, now, what I want to emphasize here is that when we get these sort of tropical systems, we get these little spin ups. They can happen. They're typically very weak and kind of like a tropical funnel situation. If there is anything that actually comes down to the ground, it's often very, very weak. But we do need to point this out because this tornado warning is going to go for several more minutes. And it's right in this area of very heavy rain that we're watching it. And the best way we can kind of detect any sort of rotation is uh, through what we call our wind detector or we actually look at the storm relative velocity. So it looks at the winds, and if there's a, a little what we call couplet, where we see these red and green colors close together that uh, represent kind of a tight spin, but we're not really seeing that. I would say this is pretty broad. If there is anything there, it is uh, extremely weak, but we did get a warning issued for this uh, particular storm, and so that's why we want to watch it. I would say that if you're in Hondo, let's keep an eye on this. Let's maybe, Watch this closely, but I have a feeling this is probably going to kind of fall apart before it gets up towards Highway 90. It's right in between Moore and uh, Hondo. They are kind of out in rural areas just to the west of Beery. So you got 173 here and Yancey off to the south and west. You're not in the path of this, but this could come up around 173 just around the Beery area. So something to watch. And not only that, we're getting some very heavy rain with this and there could be some some flooding. So we look at the radar and this is uh, some good copious amounts of rain that has fallen or falling at the moment. And we can also look at the rain rates on top of everything else where we're noticing that this rain is coming down at a really good clip. Those purple areas representing five to six inches per hour. So yeah, it'll move on through. It won't sit there for an hour, but you're going to get some, probably some flooding on some of those roadways, less traveled roadways, and there could be some deeper water in spots. Now, we don't have any flash flood warnings or anything like that. It's still this tornado warning, 
uh, but this is going to go for uh, for a while longer. That goes until 115. It's basically for Medina County because this rotation has moved north of more. What rotation there is there again isn't a ton, uh, but we'll go back to the uh, radar here and uh, put it on radar and show you that area of heavier rain that is uh, tracking north. And then you got a good shield of rain. You follow the concan down the Catula and Pierce Pearsall. And I'm going to switch radar sites here real quick. And uh, you can see kind of uh, get a better idea. The rain is not as heavy as it looks. You Valley and Concan, but that's just good soaking rain. We've seen some lightning strikes and then around uh, Catula as well. We got flash flood warnings further south as this thing uh, rotates kind of west into Mexico at this point. Uh, but we'll take one last look at this tornado warning that is going to go for a while longer and they just kind of it looks like truncated the warning a little bit there into Medina County for that rotation that still may be there. Uh, again, we're not seeing just a, a lot with it. We'll put it back on the uh, storm relative velocity and we'll take another look and I'm just not seeing a whole lot of rotation here. But if, if there is anything there, if it's, it's going to be very weak, it's going to be in between the uh, Beery and Yancey there working up towards the Hondo area. So just just keep an eye on things there and expect some heavy rain over the next uh, 20, 30 minutes or so. We're going to keep tabs on this. We'll keep you updated. And if you see kind of a, a funnel that's possible again with this kind of tropical activity, there could be a few more today and we'll have much more on this. Uh, if we need to break in, we will. And uh, we'll toss it back to uh, David and Ursula. All right, Justin, I know you're on top of it. We'll come back to it if we need to. In the meantime, let's take you downtown. Uh, before we go downtown, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. OK, let's look at the radar one last time. This tornado warning that's going to go into 115. This is a storm relative velocity. We're looking for those red and green colors, kind of a rotation. Not really seeing a whole lot here. If there is anything here, it's going to be very weak and brief. But we're going to keep an eye on the radar. We'll keep you posted here as this works up towards Hondo. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that this is likely going to get canceled here pretty soon. But if you're in Hondo, let's keep a close eye on this. Let's be careful. Uh, if you do want to put some protection between you and this storm, just in case. And know that there's going to be some pretty heavy rain involved in this too. Very quickly before we, uh, we toss back here, I, I do want to show you the radar one last time because we also have some very heavy rain involved that uh, is going to be rotating up through the Hondo area, Beery up along 173. So that's the other issue here. Uh, expect some blinding rain. There could be some minor street flooding in spots too around Hondo. And uh, Divine, maybe even Natalia, as this kind of rotates up towards uh, the I-90, or, or I'm sorry, Highway 90 area. And expect some more rain, especially west of San Antonio a little bit later today. Guys. All right, and you are not going anywhere right now. You're going to stick right here and keep your eye on that for us. Yes, sir. All Thank right. you, Justin. Yep. In, in the meantime, we will head downtown for That's right. SA Live. It starts right now. Celebrate San Antonio. Coming to you live from historic Market Square. This is SA Live. Oh, that's right, we are. And he overtakes her. Oh, and and the winner by And happy Monday. Good afternoon. I'm Fiona Gorostiza. And I'm like Oster Hage. <laughs> and of course, summer's kind of winding down. A lot of kids back in school, but oh my goodness gracious, as fall comes in here, you want to get outside and play. And this is a whole bunch of fun. And I actually picked up a hitchhiker back here as well. So. <laughs> Yes, uh, yes, you've got a little passenger there behind you, but Adam Weitzer, owner of River City Play Systems, joins us, and he's going to tell you how you can get into the driver's seat, because this isn't your average pedal cart, right? No, no. comes in all, stays, all, uh, all, all colors, um, different ages, um, all ages can be souped up. Careful kids back there, sorry I was <laughs> seeing the crash. Um, you can build them however you want. Um, age uh, two, all the way up to 99 years old, is suitable for it. Okay, when I was heard pedal cart, and we we're going to be doing this, and I thought I was going to be in one of those little kitty things, but this is uh, this is kind of grown up size. I'm loving this thing. Absolutely, and you can get them bigger than that if you need them. Oh, seriously? So this is a perfect size if you're under six foot. Um, we have other ones that'll go up to six foot seven. They're called the two XLs. You're on an XL with that passenger seat, so you lose a little bit of room. That's that's Caleb, my hitchhiker back here. So are you ready to go, Caleb? I love take a spin? Him. And yes, there, there you go, Caleb. Four Bye, years Caleb. old, Caleb. All right. And so <laughs> many different designs, right? And you can soup them up because you can pedal or you could really put the pedal to the metal. Absolutely. Uh, they come in um, the standard BFR, which stands for brake free, free wheel in reverse. You can also get them in an electric <laughs> model if you need a little extra assistance 
um, you know, that'll get you going up to 12 miles per hour. Um, perfect if you have a very hilly yard or just don't want to pedal that hard. All right, and these are great gifts for kids or adults, right? Absolutely, they sell very fast. Um, inventory is a little better now than it was last year, but go ahead, sir. Uh, no, I was going to say, the other thing I've noticed with these carts too is because a lot of times, you know, in the carts when, the, when my boys were little and they all had those hard plastic, hard rubber tires. I mean, we've got pneumatic tires on these things. This is a nice ride here. I love this. Is it smooth? It is a smooth is ride, smooth? yes. I'm not bouncing How's around on the bricks back? out here. Is it, so. Does it feel good? It How's does, the lumbar actually. support? A, a padded seat would be nice, but <laughs> we'll get into that maybe part of the souped up package. <laughs> yes, so. yes. In the souped up package, you can get a, a, a padded seat. Um, um, which will be a little more comfortable for you if you're if that's what you're looking for. Are you serious? <laughs> Absolutely. We can do we can do a padded seat for you. We can do an extra seat. We can do four seaters. A four seat uh, go kart. Four seat go karts. And somebody's got to pedal that though. Correct. You'll have two adults pedal it. You can have two kids sit in the front um, and just enjoy the ride. <laughs> Fiona, one, one, two, two three, three, go. go. Oh, done. Ah, I got to pedal go. the four seater. Right. Yeah. So, we, of course, this is just a small sampling of what you have, right? Because there's a showroom, right? Absolutely. We've got a showroom. It's located in Shirts, right down uh, 3009, like Go you're going to Garden Ridge. You can test them out there, um, or you can visit our website and order them. Okay. So I know if you're pedaling, you know, you can go as fast as you can pedal. But you mentioned, of course, the electric boogie, woogie, woogie, woogie. Uh, how fast does that go? <laughs> Correct. Well, it depends on still how hard you pedal to a certain extent, but you can get up to about Ready, 12 Caleb? miles an hour. Here we go. Uh, going uphill. Going uphill, yes. <laughs> Whoa. I love doing that. <laughs> and I love, again, all the different designs. Tell us a little, a little bit about some of them. So we've got kind of like a Jeep looking one right Yes, there. we've got the Jeep uh, suitable for age two to five. Um, we've got another little one in a, in a five to ten year old model. Um, the one Mike's on is five to ninety nine years old, and if you're taller, they do get longer. And I like that one. What's she pulling back there? Well, it doesn't look like she's pulling anything, but she could be pulling <laughs> whatever she wants. Whatever she wants. All she, right. She's got a trailer behind her. You can put the kids to work with that, taking a load of them or something like that. So, and yes. it is. I mean, it's not bad to pedal either. So. Right. Yeah. Yes. Get out here. I'm sweating. So. Okay. And of course, other things offered there at River City Play Systems, we are going to show you some incredible play sets and trampolines to create, of course, the backyard of your kids' dreams. So for more information on River City Play Systems, just head to our website, salive.com, and click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. So speaking of having fun... Yes. Recess. What was your favorite thing to do at recess? Go. Oh, the swings. I mean, yes. Okay. Swings were a blast, but we'd also play scatter, too. Oh, nice. Yeah. All right. So teeth, we want to so. know, what was your favorite <laughs> thing to do at recess? And, hey, if you've got some of those back to school, for, you know, first, first yeah. day back to school pictures, we'd love to see those, too, at SA Live on Facebook and Twitter. And you may see that a little later in the show. Welcome back to SA Live. Well, it's our Money Saving Monday, and hey, who doesn't love to take a little vacation? But you know, between the flights, the hotels, expenses, all too often you say, I'll just do it next year. But don't put off your vacation anymore because we all deserve a getaway, and we found some help. Travel enthusi enthusiast Chris joins us with five great tips to get you in vacation mode faster and best of all, for less money. That's music to our ears. Hey, Chris, how are you? I'm good. How are you today? I'm doing very well. I think I'm going to be doing better when I hear about all these great deals going on. Okay, so you've got five great tips. Let's get right to it. Number one, <clears throat> flights can be pricey. I mean, yeah, trying to find a cheap flight is so hard to do. Um, how can we find those great cheap flights? Absolutely. Skyscanner is actually a best friend. When you're searching for cheap flights, I recommend that you run to Skyscanner. If you have a little bit of time and flexibility, the app will help you locate the best destination and the time that you need to travel. And for the lowest cost, I always use Skyscanner when searching for flights. By the way, I found a flight to El Salvador for less than $300 and I started with Skyscanner, so I recommend starting there. Wow. Now, a lot of times people say, you know, you look at the dates when you want to go and then you try and find a flight to match that. But you're saying if you're flexible on your days, then you can fly, find better flight prices, right? That is the way to go if you're trying to save money or travel on a budget. All right. 
planning ahead, no matter what the situation is, it always seems to be better than having a plan going on, but especially when it comes to traveling, that can save you a lot of money, right? How would that work? Yes. Yeah, so for me, I typically look for a ticket at least six months in advance because you're able to see what the flight prices are going to look like and you have time to actually set money aside to travel to these destinations. Wow, that's a great. I mean, a lot of people, you know, think about saving for education or something like that. But yeah, if you can, you know, be good and set aside money for your flight, look ahead and go, this is how much I need. That's a, that's a fantastic idea. So, of course, research uh, when the busy season is for your destination, you can also save a lot of money too. go in the off season, right? Yes, off season. I always recommend off season. Now, there's this thing about the European summer. Everyone wants to go to Europe during the summer. Well, that is the most expens expensive time to go to Europe. But if you decide, for example, to skip the summer months and go in December, there are less tours and you're spending less money. So off season for sure. We love a European summer, but we also love to save money. So I would recommend that. Well, and then when you save money there, then you can spend it while you're there because it's more than just, I mean, a lot of people think about the flights getting there and then getting home, but you got to eat, you got to have fun, you got to see all the attractions and that can cost a bundle. So how do you save money on that? Well, I, how you save money on that is probably booking locally as opposed to going through third party websites like uh, Expedia or Viator. What I do is I wait till I get to my destination. I'm right on site and I get to talk to the locals and kind of negotiate, right? Cutting out the middleman. Um, that's a good way to invest in the economy and making sure that your money goes further. For example, when I went to Cuba a few years ago, I tried to book um, the classic card tour using Expedia and it was at least $78 close to $100 more than just getting into the city Havana and talking to a local and making that deal happen right on the spot. That's a great idea. Okay when I introduced you it said that you are a travel enthusiast. Case in point um, is this true you flew to El, Sal El Salvador just to ride on a slide? I did. I did. I saw it all over social media and I like to think that I like to live my life on the edge. It was completely terrifying, but it was just about the best 15 oh, wow. seconds of my life. Um, and I probably spent about 48 hours there and I was back in, in DC and, you know, still thinking about those fun but scary memories. <laughs> I love the expression on your face. We're showing the video right now. And that is obviously the most colorful slide I have ever seen. Would yes, you do it again? You, you know, I probably wouldn't. It's one of those things that you do once in a lifetime and then you just move on. But I think I had my fix of fear and I'm ready to conquer another adventure. I love that. Okay, Chris, so great chatting with you and great advice. And if you'd like more information on Journeys with Chris, go to our website, salive.com. Click on the As Seen on SA Live tab. Happy travels for your future ventures, Chris. Thank you for having me. Still ahead on SA Live, a taste of the Philippine Islands. We're making a signature dessert and talking about something new. But first, a good reason to get excited in the morning where you can start your day with a gourmet breakfast on the go. We get a taste next on SA Live.